Question three reads, if the third digit of an acceptable product code is not zero, which one of the following must be true? So again, we're given some if information. We could at least start there, draw a little picture next to our question, and say where can we go in terms of forward deductions from there. So we can say, if these are our five spots, and we're told that the third digit is not zero, just put not zero here to remind us, say, well, what does that get us in terms of what we're looking at here? If we're crossing out zero as an option for the third spot, we noticed from before that zero was already pretty restricted and that there were only two options for where it could go. Well, if we just cross out the third spot for zero, we know that the zero, in fact, has to go fourth. So we can place the zero here. You can say, well, do we know anything else about this ordering? Do we know whether this is one and two or two and four in these first two spots? Not yet. We're also told that the third number is less than the fifth number. And again, that's kind of restrictive, but it doesn't really get us anywhere specific. So it seems like that one deduction was really all we could do in a concrete fashion with this question. So let's go to the answer choices and see whether this is in fact enough to answer the question, because sometimes it actually will be, and you don't want to waste your time trying to do too much when there's really nothing to be had. So it says, which of the following must be true? So the second digit of the product code is two. Well, we don't know. Choice B says the third digit of the product code is three. Again, we don't really know. Choice C says the fourth digit of the product code is zero. Oh, that matches up with the one deduction that we were able to make. So we can see that this choice C, in fact, does have to be true. So that's going to be our answer to the question. We could have actually figured that out pretty quickly as long as we didn't waste our time looking for deductions that really weren't there. We can even double check and look at choices D and E to make sure that we didn't make a mistake. Choice D reads, the fifth digit of the product code is three. Again, we don't know that. And E reads, the fifth digit of the product code is one, and we don't know that either. So just with one simple deduction, we were able to answer this question. So the lesson to be learned here is really don't make things more difficult than they need to be. If you feel like you're getting stuck, go look at the answer choices and see whether you've done enough to answer the question. Question four reads, any of the following pairs could be the third and fourth digits, respectively, of an acceptable product code except. So what this question is telling us is that four of the possible options are fine, they don't result in a contradiction, and one of them actually causes a problem. So in this case, the way that we can approach answering this question is to say, well, if we're trying to see whether this works, trying to see whether it could be true, let's try to place it and see what rules get triggered and whether it in fact causes a contradiction. What you want to do here is just to allow yourself, if you get stuck, if you're not allowed to make any more forward deductions, to allow yourself to stop and move on to the next answer choice so you're not wasting too much time. And we can see how that works here. So what I've done is I've written a little picture for each of the answer choices. And on the actual LSAT, you can do this. Just do this next to each of the answer choices, again, so that you don't have to erase. And the reason that you don't want to have to erase is because, say you get through and it looks like they could all be true, well, that's because you missed a deduction somewhere. And you want to be able to go back and look at each of the answer choices without having to redo everything that you've done already. And you won't have to redo anything if it's still staring at you here. So let's go through and check each of our answer choices and see what happens. With choice A, we're trying to place the numbers 0 and 1 into the third and fourth slots. And we can go through our rules and say, well, how does this limit our options for the other placements? The first thing that you'll notice is if the digit 1 is already taken up, you have this restriction on the first two spots where the 1 and 2 option is now off the table and therefore you know that the first two spots have to be two and four. Then, since you filled in four of the five digits, 
you know that the fifth digit has to be the one that's left over, namely three. So then you just have to ask yourself, does this satisfy all the rules? Because this is, only, this is the only possible combination that works when you start with this zero and one in the third and fourth spots. So we can look at the rules. Each digit's used once. That's fine. The second digit is twice the first digit. That's fine. And the third number is less than the fifth number. Well, if the third number is zero, that's always going to work. So we can say this, in fact, does lead to something that can be true. So because our question asks any of the following could be an acceptable product code except, this is not the answer choice that we're looking for. And we go on to choice B. Here it's not as clear what to do because we were able to fill in these first two spots because we had taken the one off the table. Here we've taken the zero and the three off the table. So in terms of looking at these first two spots, it could still either be one and two or two and four. So we're not really limited in that sense. We're also not limited with the last rule here because we made the third digit zero. So this rule is going to be satisfied just by definition. And in this way, we weren't really able to restrict this to one particular product code. So it's not as satisfying to say, yes, for sure, I know that this could work. We just haven't found a reason why it hasn't. But allow yourself the flexibility to move on and look for the one that specifically breaks, rather than waste your time arbitrarily placing things to see whether this, in fact, works. So let's go on to choice C. Choice C is similar to choice A in that we've placed this number one already. So we've taken it off the table in terms of being able to assign it to one of the first two spots. That again tells us that the 2-4 combination is going to have to go at the beginning of this product code. And again, it tells us that the only number left over, namely the 3, has to go last. So again, we can check this and make sure that it works. So each number is used once. The second digit is twice the first digit. That's fine. And the third digit is less than the fifth digit. Again, this is fine. So we're looking for the answer choice that's going to reach a contradiction, so we can rule this out as a correct answer. Now let's look at choice D here. Choice D looks more like choice B, in that, at least in terms of this first rule about the 1 and 2 versus 2 and 4, we can't immediately take one option off the table. However, if we look at the other rule that we have down here, it says that the third digit must be less than the fifth digit. Well, if the third digit is three, then the only digit that we could place in this fifth spot to satisfy the rule is four. And then we know if the four is taken up, then it's the one and two that have to go here. And we can confirm that these, in fact, satisfy the rules and again, we can get rid of this as an answer choice. Which brings us down to two potential answer choices. Hopefully this one will reach a contradiction directly so we don't have to go back and look at this one just because it kind of got to a dead end in terms of deductions. If I want to place my three and my four as third and fourth, there are actually two problems that arise here. The first problem that arises is if we look at this rule here, that the third digit must be less than the fifth digit. Well, the third digit is three. We've already used up the four, so there's nothing left to put in this fifth spot. So we do, in fact, get a contradiction. You could also see, based on the table that we have here, that our zero has to go either third or fourth. And if you realize this up front, it would have been obvious that any answer choice that takes away the third and the fourth spots without putting a zero in one of them is automatically going to reach a contradiction. So in answer to the question, any of the following pairs could be the third and fourth digits of an acceptable product code except this is the one that reaches a contradiction and therefore this is the one that is your correct answer choice.